In this lesson, moving forward, I'm going to demonstrate the concept of getters and setters in Java. So I'll begin again with creating an object. I'll talk about the constructor, methods, and we'll try to relate all of those into the concept of getters and setters. Basically, similar to a concept of encapsulation where you're trying to hide certain properties within a class. So, so far, I've demonstrated objects in previous lessons. And once again, Java objects are a lot like objects in real life. So, let's create a real life object from scratch. For instance, uh, let's go ahead and create a dog. So, to begin creating these objects, we will obviously create a class named dog and then provide various characteristics. So, let's jump right in. Let me open up the Java Eclipse editor. So once I'm in the Eclipse editor, I'm going to go ahead and simply right click on the Java introduction folder, choose new, and then click on class. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm simply going to call it dog1. Click finish. And this simply creates a public class called dog1. Next, we need to think about what a dog really is. So obviously, a dog is just a set of characteristics that makes it different from another object. So for instance, Certain characteristics might be the dog has four legs, it has a tail, it's furry, and so on. So these will be the traits that we'll give to our example or dog object. And of course, we need to create variables to store these traits. And these variables need to be defined for the entire object. So here, we're not going to create them inside of any methods. In fact, we're going to create them separately and let me in fact demonstrate this so once we have the public class dog created i'm going to go ahead and within this class i'm going to create private int legs and then i'm going to create private boolean tail and one more so let's say private string hair so again the characteristics of our dog now notice all these variables are created by putting the word private in front of them. This means that the variables can only be used inside of the dog object. It's just that simple. So whenever you see the private with those variables, that means you can only use these variables inside of a certain object. In our case, it's the object called dog. And we also know that all objects have a default constructor. And this is true of even other programs as well. We've been creating constructors in previous lessons. So for this example, here's the constructor for our object called dog. So I'm going to go ahead and then simply create a public dog, set of parentheses, and then open the curly braces. Now you'll notice that it looks almost like a method. The difference, however, is that the default constructor is public without the keyword static and has no return type. Simply means that it does not have, let's say, a void or int or anything else. Also, the name of the constructor is the same as the name of the object, which is dog. And also understand that what makes this the default constructor is that it has no parameters inside of those parentheses, right? So inside of those parentheses, there are no parameters and they're blank. And by the way, the default constructor is also created automatically when creating Java objects. So next, let me go ahead and mention the concept of getters and setters. When creating Java objects, for example, it's a good idea to give other objects access to some information about your own object. So for example, in order to let other objects and classes have access to dogs variables, we need to create getters in order for outside objects and classes to change these variables. In that case, we would need to create setters. So let me give you another example. Let's say there's a painting. The painting will have different characteristics like how tall it is, what colors are used, etc. And really, it doesn't really matter about the properties of these painting because unless you can see them, it doesn't really make sense. In order to allow the outside world to see these properties, their need to be a way to get to these properties to others. And that's exactly what getters do, by the way. They provide 
eyes that others use to see objects variables. So let's say you just created a painting, but now you want to change it. You need to be able to change the properties of the painting. In other words, you want to change its variables. Setters give you access to variables in case you want to modify the data inside. So a painter, for example, might do this with a brush and think of the painter's brush as the setter for changing a property of a painting and this could be color. So same analogy will apply to our example. So let's create getters and setters for the legs variable for our dog object. So let's go ahead and create public int. I'm going to say get legs. Set a parentheses and then of course our curly braces and return legs. And then we close the curly braces. And next I'm going to go ahead and create the public void set legs int x close the parentheses open up our curly braces and then specify legs to be equal to the x variable semicolon. Now what's really happening here? So we see the method get legs with a set of parentheses. That's essentially our getter. And notice how I actually named get legs in a set of parentheses and that's a typical naming convention and you'll get used to those as you code more or you write more programs in Java. And also note I did not use the static I only use public and void because getters and setters should not be static. And I'll later get into the concept of why they should not be static. But for right now, we're not making the getters and setters to be static. We're just specifying public void and then using the set legs intx. Another thing that you might want to note is the fact that I also pass in the variable called x as a parameter. But how can that possibly work? It really can't because it can't have legs and legs. So here the setter method is basically set legs intx right here in this line is basically our setter because we're trying to modify our dog object. And we ought to remember that to set a variable we must give it the new data. So that is what's being done here really. The return type is void because we're not returning anything we're just setting our data. But that really cannot work. Java cannot really tell the difference between the legs parameter and the legs variable in dog. So what we need to do is as follows. We need to make sure that once we use our setter values, so instead of intx, we need to say legs and then set legs equals legs. But that doesn't really make sense either because it can't have the same word. So therefore, we need to use something called this dot legs. Now Java knows that we're talking about two different aspects, right? So it can, and now it can relate to our code. So here Java once again knows that this dot legs refers to the variable declared at the top and not the parameter, right? So whenever we use the this dot legs, Java knows. So similarly, I can go ahead and for the next trait, I can create the public boolean get tail, set of parentheses, open the curly braces, and then return the value, return tail, semicolon. And I can continue on with the next set of trait, which is here. But before we actually set the here trait, let's go ahead and finish the get tail so we're going to go ahead and say public void set tail boolean tail close the parentheses open the curly braces and do the same thing so i'm going to say this tail equals tail with a semicolon so now java knows exactly what we did earlier with the legs so this way we can work with getters and setters in Java. So let me go ahead, in fact, create our third trait here. So we finish this off. So public string get here, 
open the curly braces, return the value here, semicolon, and then use the public void set here, string, open the curly braces, and then use this here equals here. Perfect. So you can see that Java now knows exactly how to refer to these variables. So let me close the curly braces so we finish our code. And once we have this, we can of course use our dog object any which way we like. And we can use the print statements and manipulate these variables and get the output as per our own requirement. And of course, let's fix our syntax error. And this should be public dog one because that's the name of our constructor above here. So it has to match. So once that's corrected, we have our entire code, which is perfect. So in this demonstration, hopefully the concepts are much clearer as far as the object goes, constructor, and of course, the concept of getters and setters in Java. So practice using this, understand the concept, try to apply it, work with it a few times, and let's move to the next lesson.